G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller, and in the past I've talked quite a bit about only asking yes questions of your horse, and a lot of people have a hard time with that because they think, well, you're letting the horse win and things like that, but it's, it's, it's really about setting your horse up for success and only asking them things that they're capable of, but it doesn't mean you don't ask them to do things, but you, you make sure that you're not going to get into a bit of an argument doing things and you know sometimes it's hard to show you guys a video as an example because you need a horse that's actually at a certain stage in their training to do that so we have a um, young warm blood mare here that we're just starting under saddle my girl that works for me Kendall she's actually starting this horse under saddle and I'm helping her through the process and the other day in the round pen we started working on steering a little bit and so I captured on video three different um, three different parts of that steering. And so when I first start steering a horse, say in the round pen, I steer them in the direction they're already gonna go in. So if a horse is walking across the round pen, they're about to hit the fence and they're gonna turn, say, left when they hit the fence. As they're heading across there, I'll pick up on a rein and when they turn, I'll then let go. So they were gonna go that way anyway. That's kind of the start of introducing steering to them. Um, then after a while, what I'll do is when they are not thinking left or right, they're just going around somewhere, then I can pick up and I can steer them either left or right. The thing I won't do is try to, with a horse that doesn't know how to steer terribly well, I won't try to steer them in the opposite direction to what they're thinking. And I, you know, like if you try to steer them in the direction they don't want to go in, you'll end up having a bit of a struggle like you see right here in this little clip here. We don't normally do that, but I had Kendall do that just to show you guys what that would look like. And so what happens if you, let's say you earlier on in your training, your horse is wanting to go to the right and you try to steer him to the left and there's a bit of a brace and they kind of pull and they turn and then you let go. When you let go, that horse has a big brace in their body and horses are very good at almost taking a mental picture of what they're doing, what they're thinking and what they're feeling when you release that pressure. So if you release the pressure when they turn but they've got a big brace in their body and you do that enough times, pretty soon you go to touch the rein and they have a big brace in their body. Whereas if you can just, you know, pick up on the rein and when they decide to go that way and they just softly bend around there and release, especially in the early stages. I'm, you know, I'm not saying don't, tr don't ask your horse to, to go the opposite way than what they're thinking. You can't go with them forever, but it's a bit like that old Ray Hunt saying that says, first you go with them, then they go with you, and then you go together. That, that first you go with them is a huge part, I think, of starting young horses on the saddle because what I think a lot of people tend to do is they tend to ask no questions in the beginning a lot and the horse learns how to put a brace in their body and then that brace is a part of everything they do from there on out. So what I'd really like to do is, is you know, make sure that teaching them anything, this is this example here is steering, but teaching them anything, I really want to make sure that I am not creating a brace in the teach them how to do something because then that brace remains in that particular thing for the rest of their life.